All right, we've got a fun one today. Thank you for tuning in to the Real Estate Jam Session. Uh, I'm doing a follow-up video on how do we get more women involved in commercial real estate. And for that, I've got Jessica Mauser. Jessica is the CEO and president of Lee & Associates in the East Bay in California. Jessica, thank you for coming in. Absolutely. I like doing this in person. Yeah. Normally we have to do it like over the Skype and the whole computer thing. Yeah. It's like we're real people again. You know, there, our history is that um, because of Clubhouse, the Clubhouse app, uh, we met there through our friend Natalie Wainwright. She got yep. me on the Clubhouse. And we started connecting there, and then uh, we did a couple videos before, and so you can go back in the history. I'm sure you're all subscribed, so it won't be difficult. <laughs> and so you can see the videos we did there before, but um, so we just started talking, and actually Jessica's been a, a good resource for me to reach out to when I have a question about what we're doing with our commercial real estate company. She's one of the first ones, so thank you for being there for that as well. Absolutely. Um, nice. But, all right, so getting, uh, you know, I'm starting to see more women taking an interest in getting into commercial real estate. Are you seeing that as well? Yes, and I think that there's a couple of reasons for it. One, I think COVID is actually a blessing for women in commercial real estate because okay. so many women have these skills, but they don't want to work nine to five jobs. Right. And something that I've always talked about in commercial real estate is the ability to work your own hours and be an independent contractor. So now you have so many women who don't want to be in the traditional workforce anymore and the greatest place for them to land in my opinion is right. commercial real estate because you are afforded the opportunity to be entrepreneurial use your marketing prowess which i think a lot of women have great instinctual marketing prowess mm -hmm. um, you're in sales so you can use some of those skills but most of all you control your destiny you put in as much time or as little time as you want obviously in this business um, you get what you put into it, so hopefully you're putting in the right amount of time and right. enough time to really make your career worthwhile. Um, but I think there is a lot that commercial real estate affords women specifically, um, given kind of the post-COVID world. Right. Yeah. You know, it's um, it sounds like they're having a heck of a party out there. They are having a party. Yeah. Uh, we'll you know, rush it next. How do you think? What uh, so? Commercial real estate is evolving the way it seems, right? And I think yes. a lot of that is largely due to the, the pandemic. I mean, we've all, everybody here at this conference today, uh, met, uh, most of us met through Clubhouse and then get involved in the CRI Summit and the CRE Fam and all that and going back and forth on social networks. Um, and I think that's helped drive a lot of the women that I, that we have now hired in our brokerage. So we've hired three women in our brokerage in the last, uh, two and a half months, yeah. Okay. And actually, we're at four. We just hired one yesterday, so another. And all of them are absolutely incredible. And it's but what is the path that you think the the commercial real estate industry needs to continue going down? How do we keep this going? It's a great question. I think first, um, what we're seeing is actually more visibility of commercial real estate as a whole. I feel when I got into it, and this is dating back to the early two thousands, I had never even heard of commercial real estate. I just randomly ended up in the business. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I had stumbled upon, but when I got into it, I knew this was for me. Um, but if you would have asked me when I was in college if I was looking to be in commercial real estate, or if I knew even anything about selling and buying commercial buildings, I, I would have scoffed at that question. I would have not even known what you mm -hmm. were talking about. Right. Um, so I think as a whole, we're seeing, because there are influencers in commercial real estate now, and we're seeing visibility of commercial real estate as a whole, it's becoming more aware to people out there. Um, and I have more people than ever ask me, what is it that you do? I have friends who own uh, boutiques and different businesses, and they go, well, you're in commercial real estate. Well, what do you do? What does your day look like? And so. I think the biggest pushing thing that we can continue to do in commercial real estate is give the eyes and give the visibility to the industry as a whole. It's been just so harnessed as this um, old man's club for so many decades and decades. And now we're seeing the business as a whole evolve and become uh, much more just widespread. It's not just an old men's club anymore. It's for women, it's for men, it's for anybody who wants to be in a sales role and be in commercial real estate. If you're an um, entrepreneur, this you're an entrepreneur, you have yeah. to be an entrepreneur you do. to be in this business. Yeah, and so I think that we're seeing the typecasting going away, mm -hmm. which is great. And as we're seeing more influencers come out, uh, people are understanding this is a business for everybody. And right. uh, the access to commercial real estate, I think, was very thin through the years. 
and again it's the crews and it's um, the naops and the influencers who are out there on clubhouse that are bringing more awareness to the business as a, as a whole and i think that we definitely need to continue to give the business that awareness um, so people know what commercial real estate is yeah. um, and i feel like for many years it was really these smaller organizations that were going out and trying to kind of spread the word um, but that was you know little drips little drips and those drips weren't necessarily going far well now because of social media and because of COVID and because everything did get compressed and put on social media now you can see commercial real estate for what it is yeah and i also think you know you see we heard in a couple of the conferences today uh, the breakout sessions was how be, everybody's being more nurturing towards each other so it, like i reach out yeah. to you I mean, yeah. I'll just send a text. I think we've generationally seen a shift in the way we yeah. handle business as well. well I think the there pandemic. is an old school way of doing things and there is a new wave of doing things. Yeah. And the way the new wave is doing things is much more forthcoming. And I think it's um, kind of this, let's make the business better than the way we received it. Yeah. And I know Natalie Wainwright feels that way. We've yeah. had this conversation before. You feel that way. Um, it was tough getting into the business when I got into it. It was it was a doggy dog world. and. Everybody, you even in your own shop, you had to watch your back because yeah. you didn't leave papers on the printer, and that was yeah. very much culturally acceptable. But the wave of brokers and the people who are now turning into the seniors in the business, myself, you I mean, that's so sad to say, <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel uh, but we don't have that same view that yeah. our senior brokers had when we started in the business. Yeah. And I think that you're now seeing, and this is across the industry as a whole, as the older. Rain is retiring and going into the sunset. You've got the younger rains coming in, and we just see business different. Yeah. And because of that, you're seeing a different culture emerging in commercial real estate. I do. You know, we've had we've had a, a few situations with new hires where they came in and they thought they were just going to blow it out by just doing social, though. Yeah. That's not no, going to happen. We're not there. We definitely aren't there. It, it's it hasn't still made that in, shift yet. No. And I don't know that it ever will because at yeah, the end of the day, much. and I just, you know, I actually just did a, an Instagram post on this. At the end of the day, the business very much is about connection it and it's about relationships. And you don't trust somebody with your multi million dollar investments if you don't know that person right. and you can't sit eye to eye, face to face, and shake someone's hand and trust them. And that's something that you can't build on social. So I don't know that we will ever get to the point where uh, you will be able to be 100% social. I think that there's a connectivity that's actually um, very needed, and it's the glue of this business that will probably never go away. And I think, uh, for better or for worse, we should have that, because that connectivity is the reason I think we're sitting here right it's now. what makes the business go. I mean, the old school guys, you know, they used to show up at the office 7, 30, Phones all day. Get all day. Call, 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 call. All day. Leave at 5:30. What? No, no calls at night. Nope. And so we've made a shift now to where you yes. still are the hours, but it's not cold calling necessarily all day. You're still doing a good number of it. Yeah. You know, I don't. What? Your new associates. How many cold calls do you do you require them to make it a day? You know, I. It depends on who's mentoring them because right. I have our. Uh, so each one of our associates starts with a mentor. Okay. And that mentor is going to guide the way that they, they're, because they're the one giving the time. It's sure. their time. So they get basically a year and a half of setting kind of the plan for mm -hmm. that so person. And so um, a lot of our mentors prefer to have them physically knocking on doors. Go walk these buildings. Yeah. Go stack the office space. They want them actually out there. So we actually in our office are still doing a lot of door to door, even through COVID. And I have had some of my associates ask me, is it weird that I'm cold calling, meaning yeah. knocking on doors in COVID? And I'm like, you know what? It's not because people probably want to see your face. No, it's not good in people's face, but like right, people yeah. want to see that you're working. And it says a lot about you because yeah. you could be the guy who's not doing anything, but instead you are the guy who's still knocking on doors. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's it. It is it is a relationship business. Yes, absolutely. It does need to have a personal touch. You absolutely. can't just sit at home. I mean, if you know, we've had a few instances where agents say, "Well, I'll just work from home because I've been in the business for yeah. eight eight months." You don't get the flow of information. Yeah, you, you don't need get the flow. Yeah. I mean, you are in your first eighteen months, twenty four months yep. in the business. You will be in the office and you will be doing what your senior wants because. Yep. You've got to, you've got to get that base, but once that base is built, then you could be a little, a little more free. More, yeah, gets a little more, more relaxed after that. Um, but yeah, those first eighteen months, uh, twenty four months are absolutely crucial to yeah. the rest of 
you're laying the foundation for the next 10, 20 years of your career. Right, yeah. Um, so really grinding, being ready to grind and live on beans and rice for the first two years is something you really do have I to do. I was mac and cheese. <laughs> I'm so sick of it still. I just can't, that stuff is so gross you're still, to me. <laughs> you still can't eat mac and cheese? Yeah, oh, uh, the smell of it. Because see, I, I think I was like top ramen. And so oh, it was yeah. like, I, you know, there's like, I can't, but ramen just I know it sounds I terrible. I like ramen there, that's here, not but... in the cup, you know? Yeah, I'm so that was like our lunch in 2009 in the office because nobody yeah. would leave for lunch anymore, you know, oh, like yeah. at the bottom of the market. So you'd show up to the office and you're like, Oh, I need coffee. Can't afford coffee. All right, yeah. let's go to the office. Let's go get our drip coffee. Yeah. And it's ramen for lunch or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. That's all they would afford us in the kitchen at that point. It was, it was kind of a, it, it's a different time right now. It is. So, it uh, is. Now there's snacks in the office. And, and you know what? And I think that's what another, you know, you and I were talking about this culturally. Um, how do you make an environment where people do want to come to work? And I was saying, you know, my principle right now is how do we create an environment where people want to be there? And I almost look at it as we look at retail. And when you're curating a shopping center, you need an environment which people want to go to um, and they want entertainment and they want to go somewhere where they get an experience. It's right. an experiential type of feel. And I'm now trying to apply that to our office as well. Yeah. So you're not coming into a blase office. There right. is, there's experience, you're, there's people there, you're talking deals, we've got the whiteboards going, we've got games, yeah, you, know, you get the right culture. You got yeah. it. Yeah, you really have to um, be create the culture, and then the people you're hiring need to embrace the culture. Right. And so, if you are thinking about going into commercial real estate, it's so important because every shop is ran so different. You need to go talk to every shop out there. Yeah. I think that it's behooven of anybody to go do your homework, understand the difference between the different offices in your market, how they're ran, what the expectations are on hours, right. what the expectation is on how many cold calls you have to make yeah. a day, right? And these are so independently done at each office. Yeah. Um, so it's a great business. I think we're seeing more diversity across the board, whether it's um, women entering the business, whether it's men, whether it's whoever, young, I, I'm seeing more older people that are transitioning too right. that may have been in corporate marketing positions or corporate careers going, I don't want to be in corporate careers. Right. And you know what? I want to go try this commercial real estate thing. Um, so I, I think that you know, COVID's been great because it's opened up the visibility and I think we have to thank all of our friends who are the influencers because yeah. they are actually leading the way. In exactly. It's a lot more visible. Everybody's yes. out there tweeting and Instagram and TikTok. We do make it look really sexy, though I have to say, we it, you know we make commercial real estate look really good. I don't know that my stuff is sexy. <laughs> Come on, I have I've been on one. your YouTube. It's yeah, pretty good. yeah, I don't it's think pretty so. Good. I do want to touch on. Uh, I know that George is going to start yelling at us for time here yeah, in a second. I'm surprised we haven't. Uh, yeah, seen um, or I haven't seen it anyway. I'm not paying attention to him. Time goes longer if I don't look at him, right? <laughs> Uh, like the other so, one. <laughs> crew. Uh, so, being part of a, a women's network is that something you suggest? You know, I think you have to figure out what works for you and what speaks to you. Because if you're going to go into something, it has to be something that speaks to you. I think crew does a great job of bringing together the women, kind of pulling the pieces together in their local chapters and putting, and also giving a national presence. If you want to take it that far, right. if you want to sit in a chair, you want to go do the national level crew events, you absolutely can. Um, but I think that there's also uh, NAOP, there's CCIM, there's SOAR. There are so many organizations out there. You have to find though what fits for you. And again, it's just like choosing a brokerage firm. Go to some of these meetings, go mm -hmm. to their social events, understand kind of what that core group is, what the culture is, and then kind of direct what, how much time do you have to give to it and what do you think you're gonna go back? What's right. your return on that time? So I think Crew is an absolutely phenomenal organization. They've propped up women in this industry for years and years um, tirelessly when nobody else really did care um, or were paying attention. And so, you know, Crew gets the credit for being the original ones to come through the door. They've done a great job. They've done a really good job. Crew actually, early in my career, 2012, I wasn't even in Crew and they voted me, um, nominated me as one of the emerging leaders in commercial real estate for our market. Up? I have no idea. They called me and they're like, hey, you should come to this dinner because you've been. Uh, nominated for emerging so leader, so and so they do a really good job with that. Though they yeah. they do each chapter picks and you know brings women together, and that's what crew is about. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's not just women; it's men and women. But there yeah, are, I didn't know that till recently. That yeah. some men belong to crew as well. There are men so, who belong uh, to crew. So yeah, it's a it's it's a powerful organization that 
uh, is really, I think, it, it doesn't hurt you to belong to. You should at least talk to them. Or what were the other ones you named? Um, well, so you, I would say CCIM has a great uh, cohort of men and women as well. Um, and that's more on the investment sales side of things, if that's more your style. Um, SIOR has more and more women who are practicing industrial um, and in commercial real estate as well. Um, and NAOP. So um, I think that's another, an Urban Land Institute. I mean, there's there's some really, if you're more on the development side of things, if development speaks to you, Urban Land Institute might be the way to go. Um, and I think within those specialty groups and designations, you will find that there is going to be a meet core of uh, men and women that you'll you'll find a good place. Yeah, I think, you know, but I would suggest when you're interviewing, those those are great, but your company you're going to, when you're interviewing, you really want to see what kind of programs, if yes. they have something as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, asking about the initiatives, do you have, like I know at Lee, we have um, a diversity board and we have various subcommittees. We have our Ladies of Lee. We mm -hmm. do all kinds of um, kind of subgroups outside of your regular retail groups, your investment groups, your industrial groups. Um, we've got some different branded groups where you can find a collection of other agents or people who work at the company that have similar um, likes or interests as you know. And you know those are those are great things and you know we've got a nonprofit board so if there's a, you know if you're interested in being on the nonprofit side of things we have a place at Lee where hey we need somebody who is looking out for the nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing what you're going to get in a brokerage house the, the overall picture and the difference between a boutique firm, something mm -hmm. that's independently ran and operated versus some of these bigger companies. Um, so understanding that too, because yeah. those are completely different cultures as well. Yeah, you know, we, we've hired, like I said earlier, we hired these young women, uh, these women, and uh, well, to me, they are young women, I guess, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, and so, um, but I was, uh, I'd left the office, I came back, and there's three of men there, and somebody had been with them for a little while. And she's young, new to the business, but she was showing the new hires her social and how it worked for her. And, and she's done she's done well because I had somebody approach me here, and they said, "Hey, I see your your agent on TikTok." And I'm like, okay. All right. And he knew her name, and you yeah, know, and you know it's so interesting. It we talked to some other people here who work under we won't say names, but they have been told not to post on TikTok, oh. not to post on Instagram, yeah. not to post. They don't that, That's your bigger companies, yeah. And, those, and so that's something to be aware of. If you truly believe in digital marketing is something for you and social media is something for you, going to a big house may not be the right yeah. maneuver for you. So it definitely things to think about. Um, and it's hard when you're new in this business and you're just trying to get your bearings to start asking these questions, but they're questions that will absolutely curve uh, the way you do business. If you believe in digital media and social media and you get told six months or three months in, guess what, we don't want you doing that, that's going to change your game plan and that's going to yeah. change the way you feel about that company, it's going to change the way you feel about coming into work, and it's going to change your entire business plan. So it's one of those things that you should probably know on the upfront. Yeah, um, yeah, I it. agree. You really want to and you know, go back and ask questions is the key, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. You've got to talk to everybody. Yeah, you, you really to talk do. to all the company. Go to the big interview with them. Yeah. You know, interview the big companies, but go to the, if you want to market yourself, more, most likely you're going to be the smaller firm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the w number one thing is you really got to know who your competition is too. Mm -hmm. So know who your competition is out there because all the different, if you go into a smaller firm and you want to make sure the training's there because the CBREs, the uh, uh, Marks and Millichap, see I can't even think of their names anymore. I know. It slips right out. Oh, uh, their training program is pretty intense, and those guys are in that office all the time. And you know, you you've got to want it. This is an industry that is, I think, is being very supportive to women right now. It is. I think absolutely. there's a huge opportunity for women right now. You just gotta you gotta put your foot forward. We had one of our agents because I was so reluctant to reach out, and so uh, I was reluctant to reach out to you guys. So um, I'm thankful that she did because I know what she's going to be. I'm seeing everything. She, she's been with us a few weeks. I've seen what she's doing, yeah. and you know, and I'll say this, but hopefully the men in our company don't watch this. But <laughs> our women, our women come in. Next thing you know, they're doing their social, and they're seeing the number of likes and follows and all that. Next thing you know, the guys are not doing it. No. Well, a lot more. Jessica, thank you for coming in. Well, first of all, thank you for being part of the conference. It's I'm so excited amazing. we got to be here together. Yeah, I well, mean, like this I said, is amazing. Yeah, it was a great day. <laughs> and folks, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or to Jessica. Jessica's information will be at the bottom of the, the video. 
Uh, and if you haven't done so, but I'm sure you're subscribed by now, at least I hope so. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, and again, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you.